Sierra, the founder of Good Juju. Welcome to Mindful Business Podcast, weekly discussions about mindfulness, entrepreneurship, and Web3. This live Twitter space is about an hour long. It is recorded and uploaded to YouTube to be played back anytime. You can click the link in our bio to subscribe to our YouTube. We can find previous episodes about moon rituals, mindfulness, yoga, and more. This is episode 37, Managing Mental Health. It is May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month. I am joined by my lovely co-host, Abby, the creator of Elevate, as usual, who I will now pass the mic to so she can say hello, and then we'll dive into important topics surrounding mental health. Hey, Sierra. I hope you're doing well on this beautiful, what is a beautiful day here in the Midwest. Um, I love that we are talking about this. There's Never a bad time to talk about it, but of course, the with this being Mental Health Awareness Month, um, really important time to just continue that conversation and to dive in. I am in an especially good mood because I went plant shopping with a friend today, got a few things, a few veggies uh, for my garden, and that was like such a natural, beautiful dopamine hit that was not associated with the dopamine hits we get from social media and things like that. Uh, and so, yeah, I am feeling extra relaxed and invigorated. How are you doing today, friend? I'm feeling pretty good. I had dinner about an hour ago, kind of shift into my evening mode, kind of chill out and prepare for bed after this. So just having a nice hump day. Um, definitely looking forward to talking about mental health. feel like it's super necessary. Uh, plants also are big uh, contributors to my personal mental health as well and flowers. So I feel you. Um, yeah, to, to begin, I mean, let's, let's start by kind of establishing a common understanding of, of mental health and maybe kind of personally talking about how it impacts our, our well-being and how we personally define mental health. I mean, for me, mental health is how I sum up everything that kind of goes into everything that affects my thoughts, my feelings, and my psychological well-being, how I deal with stress, how I relate to other people, how I decide what choices are best to make. Um, So mental health is almost like this Um, When I think of a tree and I think of the root system that kind of goes down uh, underground and spreads out, I think of our mental health in terms of this foundational root system that's kind of spread across a lot of different uh, pieces. Um, So yeah, let's, let's talk about how we define mental health. Let's talk about different um, common mental health conditions. I feel like there are a lot of stigmas out there. Um, This entire episode is about just encouraging people to embrace themselves and and seek help when necessary. Um, So tell me, Abby, how do you define uh, mental health? And if you're comfortable sharing, um, as you've kind of moved through your journey of womanhood in life, how has your relationship with your own mental health evolved? First of all, really beautifully said in in your definition and kind of description of mental health and how really it it is such a um, wide encompassing topic and covers more than just this straightforward, yes, our thoughts, but also our emotions. I'm glad that you said that. Um, I, I like to think about mental health also as brain health, you know, our nervous system, um, the health of our nervous system. And sometimes that feels less, um, I don't know, you know, I think we're a lot further away from stigmas than we were once upon a time when we talk about mental health. But I do think so much so that maybe mental health has almost become a buzzword, almost like, you know, diversity and inclusion sort of became a buzzword rather than something people really do and not just talk about. So I sometimes like to interchangeably, as I said, use brain health. But as you said, emotions, it's not, even when I say brain health, that sometimes feels too straightforward. It really is this all encompassing, um, 
you know, as you said, from the roots up, when you were talking about roots, it made me really think about the, the nervous system and our central nervous system and how regulating that keeps our mental health in check. And so really it's this all encompassing um, body, mind, spirit connection that we talk so much about when we talk about mindfulness um, that all really uh, ties into what I think about as, as mental health. Um, and so, yeah, to, if I don't know how deep we want to go today, friend, <laughs> um, talking about our, our journeys of, of womanhood and, and how our mental health is. I'm happy to say right now, today, at this moment, I'm in a season at this moment where I feel really mentally healthy and strong and vibrant. And I will say that that has not been the case in the last five years very often. Um, and, you know, my relationship with my mental health goes way back to childhood. I really have um, dealt with things like depression, uh, deep depression, off and on since, since really I was probably about seven years old. Um, and anxiety came more so in my early twenties. And that's something that's, that's been, you know, a, a, a very ebbed and flowed situation, um, over the last good 27 years or so. Um, and I have had the fortune of being able to be introduced to things like counseling since grade school. I think my first counseling session um, was in third grade. And so I've had the advantage of being introduced to a variety of tools from, a, from an early age. Um, it doesn't mean I always used them. And I certainly went through some really difficult dark times with my mental health, you know, you, it, trigger warning. Um, definitely in my early twenties started to deal with suicide ideation and, um, attempts and, you know, uh, dark depression and, and really, really having to figure out who I was and what my purpose in life was. Um, and through that again and again and again, I've come back to things like counseling and therapy. I think that's my number one takeaway from all of, all of these conversations is the importance of that. And whether you go all the time consistently every day for the rest of your life, I don't know about that, but to, to understand there are seasons in our life uh, where that benefits us greatly, even if you don't deal with deep, dark depression, um, it benefits us so greatly to have someone, a, a, a lot of times when I've had this conversation with people that don't do therapy and counseling, the, you know, it's great to have friends that you can confide in and it's great to have friends that you can vent to and who have your back and who are supportive. And yet we, in my firm yet humble opinion, we still need that person who isn't biased towards us, who doesn't have our history, who doesn't, you know, isn't, it's great to have cheerleaders, but it's really great to have someone that will, you know, just listen to you and hold space for you and who isn't connected to all of your personal um, day in and day out things and who isn't, you know, going to maybe hold that later, you know, when maybe you don't want someone to have that, whatever. I digress. Counseling and therapy is huge. And also, as we've talked about numerous times in probably all of our episodes, um, that, you know, fortunately, I was introduced to body work and yoga and, and all of those things in my early 20s. Um, and, and that's been such an integral part of, of me being aware of and trying to maintain um, my mental health. And, you know, Things like depression and anxiety. I'm 47 years old. Those are things that still want to, you know, uh, 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 the, those things don't like just go away, but are far more easily managed because I have such a big ass toolkit <laughs> of things that I've acquired over my many years of, str of struggling and being on the struggle bus. I've got a great big toolkit and support system that really have helped me to be able to, to keep it in check, keep aware. Um, and yeah, uh, 
seasons come and go. I'm very happy to report I'm in a in a nice season at this moment. What are, what about you, friend? How vulnerable are we feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, first of all, I just want to say, I really appreciate you sharing and being vulnerable. And I, I found, I just found it so interesting, your choice of words. I I found it interesting and and inspiring uh, that you mentioned that being exposed to counseling and therapy at a young age was a blessing. Um, A lot of people exposed to counseling and therapy at a young age um, kind of uh, what comes with it sometimes is, is this victim mentality of like life wronged me and like I'm so broken and I'm so hurt. Um, and it's and I can tell from your story that a part of your journey is like, yeah, just oh, like overcoming that and like standing in your power. And I'm just so honored and so proud and so blessed to know you and be connected with you. Um Goodness. Okay. I'm trying. I, well, I feel like I've kind of glazed over my mental health experience a few times as it relates to um, getting into crystals and yoga, uh, seeking ways to manage my PMDD. Um, most of my PMD, not most, all of my PMDD symptoms being related to my mental health and my mood particularly feelings of cyclical feelings um, the week leading up to menstruation of severe depression, anxiety, and rage. Um, And the rage is really peculiar. I can't even say it. (laughs) I was just telling Abby in the voice memo that I recently got Invisalign and I'm like still... (laughs) I'm still learning to talk with it. So I know I'm going to listen back to this recording and be like, oh God. So whatever, I'm, I'm going to ditch that word because my Invisalign is not allowing it. Um, but now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, oh, um, okay. I was talking about uh, PMDD. Um, okay, yeah. So for a lot of people, when you think of uh, PMS and you think of menstruation, a lot of people think of cramps and definitely like ir- ir- being irritable or being moody. Um but for me, rage, rage was interesting because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a particularly rageful person. Like it takes a lot to really set me off. Um, but cyclically every month, like I was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And it was like, whoa, like who is this angry, impatient, like tired, <laughs> anxious, nasty person? Like, it's not me. Like I, I felt like I wasn't myself and then I felt guilty having to subject other people to that version of myself because I knew I wasn't my best self. Um, And it it, it just became just layers of like feeling bad and then feeling bad about feeling bad and then feeling bad about making other people feeling bad. (laughs) So essentially, goodness, um, I got into yoga about five years ago and and discovered crystals, all these alternative healing. And I I love how we have so many parallels in our story, um, despite being from different generations. Um, And and I might and I don't know, I might have even touched on this in a previous mindful business episode, but I'm a super crunchy natural person. Uh, I don't like taking medicine unless like I'm absolutely like (laughs) <laughs> unless I'm on my deathbed and I really, really need to. I was I was almost resistant to getting vaccinated, not because I'm like a crazy anti-vaxxer, but just because like I'm not a medicine person of any kind. <laughs> so that being said, uh, I've, I've talked to not only my OBGYN, but also therapists, um, psychiatrists, uh, counselors about the feelings and the depression and rage around and and sadness around my PMDD. And time and time again, I was, I was suggested to take medication. Um, and I was very resistant. 
uh, I had experimented initially with some recommendations around different birth controls. So lots of crappy side effects. Any woman who's taken birth control and, and played God with their hormones just knows like sometimes you gain weight, sometimes you lose weight, like sometimes you break out, like sometimes you can't sleep. It's just like Russian roulette of like what is going to go wrong with my life, like all this to not get pregnant. So if you're a man, be grateful. Anyways, um, finally, I had a, the tipping point and breaking point was like my PMDD reaching a point where like, it was making me intolerable to people I love and like becoming a real burden to those around me where it was just like, girl, like, you're not you're not addressing this properly. And now it's like not only inconveniencing you, but other people. Like now you're like not only like making yourself feel bad, but like you're going to have like a temper tantrum in public, like a crazy person. Like why? Like, you know, so I finally, 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 where are we may as of four months ago, took a doctor's suggestion to take medicine for my BMDD. And it's been like a dark cloud has been like lifted out of my life and out of my world. And it's like, just made me realize my mental health was at like, I was operating like almost from the negative for so for years, just trying to manage on my own, like saying like, I'm just going to do my crystals and my yoga and smoke my weed. And like, I'm going to be good. And it was just like, no, dude, like, you actually, <laughs> and I'm not saying that everyone needs to pursue like medication. Like maybe you just need talk therapy. Maybe yoga is just enough. Like everyone has different levels and needs, but like, I just, I don't know, looking back, I wish I wasn't so resistant and hindsight is 2020 and I have a long life ahead of me to learn from this, you know, uh, learn, <laughs> learn from how being resistant can be detrimental. Um, but yeah, all that to say, if you have any type of illness, mental health related or not, um, if you have the means and it's accessible for you to get professional help, uh, please seek it. And please seek a variety of opinions. Like if you go to somebody, and that was my issue too, like I would go to somebody and I wouldn't like them. And then it would just turn me off from like going to anybody else. And like, learning from that experience. It's like, if you go to a specialist or a doctor or a therapist or a counselor and you're not vibing with them, like, don't let that deter you completely from like getting the help that you need. Like that's been me so many times where it's like, mm, I didn't really like her attitude. So I guess I'm just not, it's just like, dude. <laughs> so it's been a lot of like, a lot of self-reflection, a lot of growth. Um, and I'm happy to say in this moment, like, my mental health is the best it's been in a long time. Um, definitely due to taking the medication recommendation of a professional, um, but also due to like managing sleep and practicing yoga every day, eating a balanced diet, taking my dog for walks outside, spending time with loved ones, like it all factors in. Um, so yeah, that was a, that was a long winded way of saying, I feel you and I'm right there with you. And I feel like this, this episode is going to tie into so many other things we've talked about as it relates to self care and boundaries and just so many things. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to pass the mic back to you, Abby. I want to just thank you for sharing that story and sharing your progress with that and being vulnerable to share how you have felt resistant to, to medication and your journey with that. I, deeply relate to, to your feelings on that. And similarly, really needed medication for my anxiety. And um, uh, it's been a couple of years, I, I get the years mixed up, but it, within the last couple of years, there was a season that I that I really needed it. And I had been so resistant. And, and similarly, it had been suggested to me multiple times by doctors. And I, you know, I had done so well, with all of the other things, all of like the natural ways for so long um, that they, they did, they had stopped working. My stress got out of control um, and, and, you know, I had blood pressure issues and all kinds of things from my stress. And so I was resistant and, and then decided, fine. It was, I had, it was, we were taking a trip to Mexico to lead a retreat. And I was so anxious to get on a plane and go down there 
um, for a variety of reasons. You know, I, I get, I get, uh, you know, I get irrational thoughts sometimes with all of this fear and anxiety. And so I really decided and realized, okay, I, similarly, I, it was negatively affecting my relationships, my daily life. And I want to be able to function in a way that gives me freedom of movement in my body and in my life. Um, and, and so I did the same thing. I finally took the advice, took the medicine and my only regret was not doing it sooner. And, and also regretting, you know, I've been in the wellness industry a long ass time. And I think once upon a time, probably, can you hear my cat bellowing? I'm so sorry. Anyway, um, she's once in, but she's not coming in. Um, once upon a time, looking down my nose a bit at, and feeling like I don't need medication and maybe feeling like, oh, that's not the right way. But listen, it, there is a, a, a time and a place and a season for all things. You know, I do think it's wonderful to kind of exhaust every effort and to, 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 do what you can with that is within your control as, as much as you can, you know, try a few different things, but there is a time and a place when, when, when you've exhausted your efforts and it is affecting your life and you have to get it in check because it is at the root, as you said really eloquently at the beginning of this conversation, it's at the root of everything and if we don't have our mental health in order, it's going to affect, as you said, our sleep. It's going to fuck with our hormones, which fucks with everything. Um, and, and, and it does. It will affect our, our, our relationships with others in the world. But, but most importantly and most detrimentally, our, our relationship with ourselves, if we don't have it in check and continue to keep it in check. And it's one of those things like, brushing your teeth and taking a bath and motivation. None of those things last. And so we have to do them pretty regularly, right? And so same with um, whatever it is we're doing to, to fine tune, uh, uh, maintain, sustain, establish mental health um, practices and awareness. It has to be really consistent. Um, it's, it's great that we have a month for it, but, but to continue the conversations, um, and to surround ourselves with people and like that supportive network around us that, that really do value mental health, um, as just a, as like one of the things that has to be on our list of, of things we're taking care of. You know, we get our car, uh, uh, serviced, right? We change the oil in our car pretty regularly. Um, if, if we're doing things the way we should, if we, if we want to maintain the life of the car and most of us do those things, if we invest in an automobile, we generally invest in the upkeep and care of it. And, and I think, um, maybe overlook, um, our own mental health, um, or, or very easily talk ourselves out of, like you said, Oh, that doctor, smells like soup. I can't go to them ever again. You know, like we'll really easily talk ourselves out. I do the same thing with like, Oh, my mammogram. I, Oh, I missed it this year. Oh, well I need another thing from the doctor. And Oh, we really easily put ourselves on the back burner and really easily come up with excuses and roadblocks and stand in our own way sometimes of doing what we probably know in our gut is going to help us do and, you know, there's all kinds of stubborn reasons for, for these things. Um, but having the supportive network, having these conversations reminds us and reminds each other um, that, oh, yeah, if I'm going to tell my, my very good friend, Sierra, hey, I care about you, friend, take care of yourself, I should probably do the same thing for myself. And we can do that for each other. So, um, so yeah, just really appreciate this conversation. <sighs> Me too, so much. This is very necessary. And I love the example that you used about regular maintenance on your vehicle. Um, and yeah, I feel like that is a perfect almost segue into like talking about not the upside or the positive side, but like the, the preventative maintenance uh, and the things that we can do to uh, avoid burnout, uh, meltdown, 
um, panic attack, uh, whatever it is, whatever your peak point of exhaustion, frustration, stress, uh, anger, sadness, whatever that is, how can we avoid that from manifesting? Um, and perfect that we have you, Abby, because I feel like stress management is a huge part of that. And stress is inevitable. You know, life is stressful. And no matter who you are, um, you are going to have experiences and people in your life that cause you stress. And that's just the nature of existing and being a human being. Um, but luckily, what is within our control is how we manage our stress. And and luckily, there are a lot of different techniques that are available to us that can help us manage our stress. And we talk about these techniques regularly <laughs> to no end uh, here on Mindful Business. Things like um, relaxation exercises, maybe meditation, deep breathing, um, exercise, yoga, even time management. We had an episode about time management, and I feel like t time management is a form of stress management. Um, so yeah, Abby, I want you to kind of tell me a bit about like how, how has, how has successfully managing your stress improved your mental well-being? Stress management is everything. It's funny as you were talking about it, my, my, the first thing that comes to my brain is time management is stress management. And then you said it right after my brain was thinking it, um, because it is so true. Um, yeah, stress management is literally everything. And, and, you know, some of these things just come from experience, right? We, there are a lot of things we don't know until we're, we're, we're doing things that don't work so successfully. Um, and we maybe have to kind of, if you're like me, sometimes you have to do things really unsuccessfully a few times, get it really wrong multiple times before you come to the realization that there's a better way that there, you know, it's really nice to have a system in place. Sometimes it's really nice to, um, know yourself really well. And I think some of that comes with just time and experience. Um, you know, as, as you know, from personal, uh, conversations, but also se several times, I think on this show, you know, life has humbled me in, in several different ways. And if, if I would have allowed the stress to just spiral me out of control, which there have been times it has, then my physical health has taken an absolute toll and will and does you know, life will literally just sit your ass right the fuck down <laughs> if we don't manage it ourselves. It's either you manage it or it's going to manage you. And that is the absolute truth. You know, we we have to figure out ways of, of being able to ask ourselves, you know, I know you are the boundary queen. We, we have to figure out how to ask ourselves does this nourish me or does this deplete me? That is, is one of the most common questions I've come to ask anymore. I, I've been very intentional in the last couple of years specifically of taking care of my nervous system. In all my 24 some years of, of being in the wellness industry, I've talked a lot about the importance of your cardiovascular system. I've talked a lot about your muscles and your bones and your tendons and, and you know, strengthening and, and, and increasing your mobility and your proprioception and your flexibility and all these things of your physical body. And I talked a lot about the breath and how you can manage your stress with the breath, but I really overlooked until the last couple few years, um, of having like debilitating levels of physical ailments. I really, when all I could do was think about my nervous system for, for a season, I really had overlooked until that season and out of bare necessity overlooked how greatly important it is. So now I'm over here at 47 trying to holler back at my younger versions of myself or my sisters who are younger than me or, you know, my friends, whatever that please don't overlook the importance of your nervous system and taking the time to slow down and take care of that, not overstretching yourself too thin, not being afraid of saying no, not being afraid of filling your own cup. You know, I think we've talked early on about 
um, I, and I've heard Lori Grace use this analogy before about, you know, when the airplane's crashing, right? You, you have to put the air mask on your face first before you can show up and help anybody else. You have to make sure that you can breathe first. And I think that the joy of having these conversations, the joy of being on the other side of some of these really humbling experiences is, is the wisdom that has come with it of knowing it's not like a luxury. It's a, it's a necessity. It is a necessity to slow down and take care and, and keep that at the top of your list of priorities um, to take care of that mental health. Hallelujah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? Like, as you were saying that, I was I was just thinking, like, even us having this conversation and sharing personal experiences and talking about stress management and, you know, self-care, emotional well-being, um, this is this is kind of this is a part of us actively participating in creating environments that are mental health friendly. And I feel like, I, I guess, <laughs> I guess society is becoming more woke in like recent months and years. And this is becoming a uh, more commonplace, maybe seeing mental health initiatives in workplaces or in schools. Um, but for the majority of Americans, especially low skilled labor or mi a lot of middle class Americans, even um, these are not things people have access to. And that's why it's important that in every group environment, whether it's at home, in your yoga community, in our Twitter space community, um, you can you can create a mental health friendly environment where you can communicate openly, you can reduce stigma, and you can encourage people to engage in self-care practices and seek support because ultimately that's what it all kind of boils down to. There's no like magic trick to like, okay, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and I hope that my story earlier didn't sound like take this pill and everything in your life is going to be better because <laughs> that's not the case. Because for me, I don't even feel like it was so much the medicine. I feel like a lot of it also came in releasing the resistance and releasing uh, my belief that I knew best, uh, what was, what was best for me. Um, because I guess what's humbling too about mental health in your brain is like, damn, it's like, even though my brain is inside me and it's like, I should know my brain better than anybody. Like I got to go and pay a coach, a doctor, a therapist <laughs> to tell me what I need. Oh, God is a comedian. That is too funny. So that being said, it was a humbling experience in terms of like, okay, I've been super resistant. I've, I, I've been thinking I know better and I have all the answers, but clearly I don't because I don't have any relief. Uh, and then just finally being open to the support and direction that I needed from a professional. So yes, mental health friendly community. I, mean, I see we have Jana here and uh, today actually uh, Jomo is, is minting. And you know what? Like, I'm going to quickly, uh, I'm going to pin it up here. And, and Jana, I don't know, like, you know, what? I don't want to put you on the spot because I know you've literally been talking about this all day, <laughs> maybe more than a day, maybe for 36, 48 hours. I don't know how long you've been talking about this. I will extend an open invitation. If you want to come up and talk about it, you're welcome to request the mic. But if you don't, uh, I'm happy. <laughs> I am happy to uh, just kind of quickly talk about it and save you the trouble because like I said, girl, I'm, I'm sure it's been a day. So let me quickly find and, uh, oh goodness, I want to find and pin. Oh, look, there she is. Perfect. Hi, honey. I, I hope I didn't put you on the spot too much. Oh my God. Are you kidding? Please. I love you. Thank you. No, no, you're all good. I've been like between, I have another space that starts at eight. So I have like a few minutes to just come up and hang out with some of my besties in web three uh, here in uh, traffic in New York city. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a whirlwind of a day and it's not over. We still have two more spaces to go. Uh, 
which is unreal. Um, but I'm very excited about this mint. Um, and, you know, we've been fortunate to raise some, some good money uh, for these five charities um, and, you know, get to engage with these amazing artists. I also just saw, a, 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 I closed the space out and Deepak Chopra has posted a reel with my face on it, tagging me in it. Um, so I'm kind of dealing with the surrealness of that tomorrow. He's going to be on spaces with us at 1 PM with, uh, Miguel, um, and some of our, our artists and, and, uh, some of the folks that we've been building this unbelievable project with. So, um, including your sweet, sweet face. So, uh, thank you for having me up here. Oh, it is my pleasure. I'm happy to have you up here. And it's so, oh my God, my heart just exploded when I heard the New York City obnoxiousness in the background. I'm so happy that uh, we're in the same country. <laughs> and I'm so happy that you're going to be able to see the artwork, including your own uh, displayed at the gallery. And I can't wait to see photos. And okay, so Quickly, very quickly, like, could you give me the elevator pitch version of like, what is Jomo effect? Um, and kind of who's involved? And what is the the end goal for anyone who's unfamiliar? I know, like for the YouTube version of this, if you're not a live listener, uh, you're gonna miss the mint, and you'll have to check it out on secondary. Uh, but keep that in mind as you give us the description, Jana. Cool. So yeah, even on secondary, some of this money is going to charity anyway. Um, so uh, the, this is going to be the longest elevator pitch because there's a bazillion people involved. But here we go. Uh, we have um, five mental health charities that we are raising money for. Um, and uh, they are, oh, ple please, Lord, Half the Story, Minds Foundation, Love Loud, American Foundation uh, for Suicide Prevention, and... Um, Oh no, Jana, it'll come back to me. It'll come on, come on, love loud. Wow, 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 wow. It's okay. Uh, sorry, last one, you matter. Um, uh, then we've got uh, a bunch of different partners, including uh, Time Pieces and um, Save a Love, which is Deepak Chopra's Web3 initiative. We're working with uh, House of First, Poly Doge, Intentional XYZ, and my own brand, Janastern.com. Um, and Jana Stern Healer. Uh, and then we have 40 unbelievable artists who have created pieces about what joy means to them. And each of those pieces are minting on Magic Eden on Polygon, um, being distributed by our friends at Pledge TO, who are giving, turning this uh, Polygon Matic into dollars for all of these charities. Um, and uh, every dollar except for the three percent that pledge takes is going to these five charities um and they are gonna be minting uh for 24 matic till 1 p.m tomorrow which is uh wednesday may sorry thursday may 11th um and um yeah and then secondary sales uh one third goes to the five charities one third goes to uh, the 40 artists and one third goes to Peace Inside Live. So um, we know that we're going to to you know help build the the Web three initiatives that we are building uh, around mental health and well being. So um, I I think I I shortened it as much as I possibly could, but there's like a bazillion like I said partners and people that are involved in this, and uh, yeah, we're just super super stoked about it. Well, girl, we just took an elevator ride to the penthouse. <laughs> it is all good. I, I know there are so many people involved and so many amazing artists, charities, just partners, contributors. I get it. Um, for anyone who wants more information, um, you can check out Peace Inside Live. They have so much information on their Twitter. They're constantly retweeting the artists. They're sharing the live Twitter spaces, uh, links, things of that nature. Um, if you're live, I've, I've pinned a, a tweet. Um, oh, I got the last one. A coma project. So sorry. <laughs> Look, it did come back. Um Okay, I'm going to pass the mic over to Abby. I don't know if uh, the Jomo and FOMO talk has uh, elicited any feelings within you. <laughs> I'm feeling extremely proud of my friends and excited and just really in awe of seeing this 
really blossom over the course of time from what started as some just like a cool idea into just this massive initiative and it's come together so beautifully. And I know you all, especially you, Jana, have worked so tirelessly to make this come together. And so I feel nothing but joy, joy, joy in my heart to just watch this all come together. It's really exciting. And I love that you're there in New York to, to take part in all this. Like, I'm just, I'm just so stoked. Uh, so stoked and giving big squishy hugs um, from over here just for all of you that have, have, have worked so hard to make this happen. Um, congrats, congrats, congrats. Thank you. I love you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, I know both of you are such huge proponents for managing mental health and, you know, just mindfulness and kindness and doing for others. And both of you are constantly doing that. And I'm so grateful for both of you. Mm, thank you for coming up. I know you're busy. I know you're running around the city. If you want to hang up here with us, you're welcome to. But if you want to drop back down, that's totally fine too. I appreciate you sharing the details about the fundraising project. And I'm super honored to be participating. I made a piece of artwork um, using Midjourney. I've been making a ton of AI art lately. And <laughs> I was joking about this <laughs> earlier it seems to be the most interesting thing I've done in, in Web3 in the last uh, year and a half, apparently. Despite being here and showing up every day, uh, people are more interested in, in my mid-journey art uh, than anything. Uh, so I made a piece of art uh, as one of the 40 artists that contributed. And I'm just so excited. It's a blind mint. I can't wait to see who mints my artwork. Um, if you're listening and you do mint my artwork, please tag me. <laughs> I want to be your friend. Uh, but yeah, Jana, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to, I want to shift and, and cover one more thing before we, uh, we have about 15 minutes left before we wrap up our space tonight. I want to, want to touch on self-care. I kind of, I kind of like, uh, sorry. <laughs> I think I like got a call or something. Um, what is, what is this? Sorry, I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> oh, I hate that. Why does, it... I don't know if anyone's ever like been, I have to ask the guy who edits our YouTube to cut this part out. Um, but, but when you're hosting a space, if someone uh, calls you, it'll like completely just, I don't know, cut out and interrupt. Anywho, I want to talk about self-care. So we talked a bit about stress management and how that relates to kind of preventative maintenance for our mental health. And I feel like self-care, I, I guess it's a form of stress management, um, although it's not often, uh, I guess, characterized in that way. Um, but self-care, I feel, is also critical for maintaining mental health. And this self-care doesn't necessarily for, for every person it's different. Maybe for, for me, it's getting a manicure. Um, but for somebody else, it's like indulging, uh, at a restaurant they really like once a month. Like it just involves prioritizing your own needs and really taking intentional and deliberate action to nurture your own well being. Um, so for me, that that's spending time with my crystals, doing my yoga. Um, like I mentioned earlier, just taking a walk in nature, spending time with my husband and my dog, um, spending time with family, cooking a meal for my family. Like, um, and and it's interesting because I'm I'm mentioning other people, but self care doesn't necessarily mean solitude. Um, socializing is a form of self-care, especially I work remote and I feel like for me, um, getting out and seeing at least a few human beings every day is, is self-care for me. Otherwise it's like, goodness gracious, like another day, like in these four walls. <laughs> so what about you, Abby? I know that, you know, body work and yoga is, is certainly a part of your self-care practice, but um, please feel free to share in terms of, of different tools, resources, practices that you do yourself. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think you're so right that this is such an integral part of of mental health and and a huge part of the conversation. And I think we've talked a lot about what what those kind of classic things look like, right? We've talked a lot about our yoga practices and meditation and and I definitely engage in those daily um, and regularly and, and keep myself in check that way. But it's also the little things. It's the little things that I think become ritual. It's my coffee by myself in the morning that has become ritual this time when, you know, the kids aren't here all the time anymore, but even when they are here, it's still this lovely time to myself, um, of, of reflection. Um, I think it just becomes a ritual, the, the making of the coffee itself, you know, um, something as small as that, but that's, that's leaning into really enjoying the moment as it's happening, the fullness of the moment itself, um, not feeling, not allowing yourself to feel guilty or to feel like, oh, I should this, or I should that removing this should business, I think from, from the vernacular, from the story, um, it has been a helpful part of my self care. Um, I, I have a friend who catches me sometimes if I say, you know, any little self deprecating thing, which I've come a long way in that department. But I have a friend who when catches me doing that will say, I think you should re examine that story you're telling yourself right about whatever that thing might be. And so just like staying open to having fresh perspective. I know these sound like subtle things, but I really think that all ties into self-care, the way we talk to ourselves about ourselves, um, the way we savor the simple moments. Um, and a lot in the last, since, since we have finally started getting nice weather here in the Midwest, I have unplugged so much in the last couple of months and have really enjoyed a lot, a lot, a lot of a solo outdoor time. Um, I, I think I've mentioned before once upon a time, I was terrified of being by myself in terms of a single person, a single woman. And I am really learning to love it. I have moments where I feel like nobody loves me and I'm going to die alone. Right. <laughs> if I'm being honest, but we, as you mentioned, our brains are not always reliable places. Our brains will tell us some straight up bullshit that isn't true. And remembering that is also self-care. Um, but no, I uh, really leaning into a lot of solo outdoor time, hikes outside, building my bonfire by myself outside. Some of these things are just wonderful forms of self-care for me. So <laughs> what about you? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I remember in a previous Mindful Business, you talked about how you love building fires and and just the feeling of, of, of it burning and of gathering what you need. And, and yes, absolutely. And I love what you mentioned in terms of no, uh, no should, no shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, I'm so guilty of that. I'm a should. I, I always, I, I catch myself saying it uh, all the time. I should do this. I should, I should. Um, and my husband is actually really good about catching me and being like, like, should, like, either you're going to or you're not, like, please, like, you're constantly. <laughs> and sometimes that little nudge is like what you need, because these things be just become habits of speech. And then habits of speech uh, manifest in reality, because our words are powerful, and <laughs> their vibrations are the fabric of reality. So it's important to yeah, to not like use vocabulary that's self depreciating or not affirmative or uncertain or unsure or maybe, um, yes, no shoulda coulda woulda. Um, and I and I, it's funny. I'm a shoulda coulda woulda, and my husband is not a shoulda coulda woulda, but he he is very hard on himself, and like he will he will say like the worst. <laughs> Like, I don't know, we all think bad things about ourselves, but like, he'll say it out loud for me to hear. And I'm like, oh my God, like, don't talk about yourself that way. You're not this, you're not that, you know? So it's like, also, I feel like, and, and this kind of leads me to our final point as we wrap up that we've touched on many times, seeking support and 
Yeah, it's like sometimes you need just a sound mind um, and and no mind is sound 24 um, seven. But hopefully you can be around another mind that is sound uh, when yours is not. <laughs> God willing. Um, so seeking support, such a crucial step in managing our mental health. It's really sometimes it's really not something that we can manage on our own. And we, we are, it's necessary to reach out for help. Um, so I guess there's a few things there's like understanding your own bandwidth in terms of like what's normal and what's not normal. And at what point, uh, maybe it's time to seek help. Um, obviously I think it's common knowledge that like suicidal thoughts if if you're going to hurt yourself if you're going to hurt yourself or someone else that's a major red flag that maybe it's time to talk to, to someone um but for a lot of people i feel like sometimes it's not um it's not so severe or or so obvious i i should say and i feel like um for other people um maybe they don't know that they're in the midst of a chronic depression or that they're having a panic attack um, but they just know that this really uncomfortable feeling is like overcoming them and they recognize it and it, it's it's happened again and again. And it's like, if you're in that circumstance, um, it's also a good time to seek support or help. Um, and support doesn't necessarily mean always a mental health professional. Maybe it's um, an, an older person you trust, a mentor, a friend, a family member, starting somewhere um, is better than isolating yourself um, there. And of course, there's therapy, there's support groups, there are helplines, there are chat groups, there are NFTs, you want to make a friend, you want an instant friend group, <laughs> buy an NFT and join a Discord server. <laughs> You will have, you will have at least a thousand friends immediately. <laughs> this is kind of a joke, but not really, not really, because some of my closest friends that I've connected with this last couple of years have been through NFTs and Web3. So it's really not even a joke. So yes, um, I, I touched on before, you know, mental health friendly environments and the importance of destigmatizing mental health. But a lot of it also relates to like, being comfortable talking with other people about our experiences and being vulnerable and being willing to seek support from others. Um, what do you think, Abby? I think you're a hundred percent spot on. We, everybody needs support. And I think we get trapped in our own minds so often. And, and as we have touched on, our minds are not always reliable places. We're inside our own minds. And so it takes the perspective of someone from the outside looking in to remind us that, hey, look up, get out of there, get out of the dark clouds, you know, and to give us that perspective. Like you you catch your husband with the negative self-talk, you know, it's great that he says it out loud so you can say, hey, no, that's not true. And and we can encourage each other. We all need encouragement, support, um, you know people think I'm so brave and I am, but the truth is nine times out of 10, all I ever really need is someone to grab my shoulders and look me in the face and say, you can fucking do this. And, and somehow I believe them over myself. And I think we all really can benefit from, from having that in our lives. And so, you know, it's great to be, be that in, in other people's lives too, you know, be a cheerleader. Um, and so that you can get that energy back in your life. It makes all the difference in the world. I think continuing to normalize these conversations is another form of support. As you said, just holding this safe space, um, because not everyone does have or will have access for a variety of reasons. And so support, it comes from having conversations where we normalize, oh yeah, my brain thinks these things too sometimes. And, you know, oh yes, like I have been so stressed out that, that these things have come up for me before. And yeah, I, you know, think therapy is awesome. And I think sometimes medication is needed and sometimes it's for a season and sometimes it's for a really long time and all of it is okay because we all have to find what works for us and that's going to be something different for everyone and so I think just continuing to really normalize um, 
all the aspects of mental health and that we're, none of us are alone. Our brains will tell us we are. And in some ways we kind of are, but we really are never alone either if you really think about it. Um, and so support is, is just huge. And, and I, I would like to say everything it's, it's not everything, but it sure is a whole lot of that pie. Support is just an NFT away. <laughs> Oh my God, honey. Absolutely. Beautifully said. Um, yes, yes, yes. This has been, this has been a really incredible conversation. I'm really, I'm really proud to use my platform in this way. I, I feel like, um, I don't know, especially in web three, it's like people have these, <laughs> people have daily Twitter spaces, literally talking about nothing. And like 200 people show up like, consistently and it's it's kind of mind-boggling to me literally talking about nothing and I just feel so proud and so honored to use my platform to cover valuable strategies for managing mental health and to talk about something that matters during mental health awareness month <laughs> your mental health matters and seeking support talking about what doesn't feel right is a sign of strength, not weakness. Please prioritize your own well-being and please be gentle with others and be supporting of others as they travel on their own mental health journey. We are, oh, I'm, I'm sad because we have a few more people that have joined us, but we are wrapping up our Twitter space. This has been an incredible hour. We do these every Wednesday night at 7 I want to thank the live listeners for hanging out. This was recorded. If you join late, we spent the entire hour talking about different strategies to manage mental health, everything from uh, stress management to self-care, um, and then kind of wrapped up with seeking support and even had Jana up here for a moment to talk about uh, the mental health charity project uh, that is minting for the next 24 hours Jomo effect. Um, hashtag Jomo effect, and you will see everything about it. So thank you for hanging out with us. Um, please slide in my DMs if you need any mental health resources um, or further information. This is a safe space. Uh, please do join us next week for another episode of Mindful Business. Next week is episode 38, Selling Your First NFT. It's another installment in our Web3 onboarding series. So if you've been hearing me talk about NFTs uh, and you're curious to uh, buy or sell um, your own, please tune in. Uh, thanks for hanging and we will see you next time. Bye, y'all.